Welcome, weary traveler. Do the minds of the mirror dungeons have you feeling down? Well, don't worry, I am an expert who knows everything there is to know about mirror dungeon hard mode. Or, that's what I wish I could say, but as of writing this script, I have only done two runs of mirror dungeon hard. However, I already know people are going to struggle to all hell with this for several reasons, so I figured I would release a quick video addressing some of the problems people may have, and that I know they will have, and offer some insight slash solutions to them. So, first of all, Mirror Dungeon Hard requires all of the starting buffs, right? Well, no. The new starter buffs are generally not impactful. The extra gifts for archetypes you like running may be nice, especially unlocking Midwinter Nightmare and Standard Duty Battery for Sinking and Rupture respectively, and some extra max speed lessens the chance you end up in serious danger of being in a tricky position due to unfavorable speed ranges. What I would recommend having is starter buffs all the way up to when you get an extra Ego Gift for starting a run. This can allow you to get build at defining Ego Gifts early on, allowing you an easier run overall. However, this is also not required. So that begs the question of what is required. The first and most important thing is at least six decently powerful IDs that are at least level 35 and up tie 3. Now, you can do it with even lower level IDs, but I would not recommend trying the hard mode before having six properly leveled IDs. This is even better if those six are all part of an archetype like Bleed, Sinking, or Rupture, since their true damage is nice for getting through the sometimes large health pools of Mirror Dungeon Hard. In addition, you can better lean into the equifs you get on the start. Now, once you have a team assembled, the beginning of the run is not too different from the normal dungeon, and on those early floors, I would recommend trying to focus on accumulating cost in order to get good skill replacements or re-rolling for good ego gifts. Some form of healing ego gift, ego resource generation, or early tomorrow's fortune are all good ones to shoot for, or any ego gift that benefits your archetype significantly. Now that you are likely progressing along nicely enough, it is important to be mindful about the debuffs you choose. Though these early game debuffs are on the lighter side, it is still important to not let their potential long-term effects hurt you. Even plus one base power or final power can end up being problematic when it is stacked with several debuffs of a similar nature. By far the lightest debuff I have come across was plus two to enemy defense skills, which was on floor one, so if you see anything relatively non-impactful like that, take it. When choosing debuffs, pretend like the ego gift does not exist. Greeting for better ego gifts when the debuff is bad is a good way to wind up dead, or regretting your choices so much that you wish you were dead. Now before talking about the rest of the floors, a small tip that I follow is moving to nodes where you have more options. The fog of war makes it impossible to see what is coming next, so having two nodes to move to instead of one lessens your chances of being stuck going into a tough elite encounter or pierced nodes which usually have the toughest enemies with the highest rolls. Moving on though, floor 2 and 3 should not pose too much of an issue, or at least not much harder than floor 1, but floor 4 and 5 are definitely where it becomes possible to struggle, and struggle hard. Again, the most important thing is to set yourself up for success via ego gifts and proper debuff selection and saving ego resources, but for these two floors especially, avoid elite encounters. No ego gift is worth the potential damage these encounters can do, and they also just take a long time. They are no joke. However, in non-elite encounters, you can still run into troubles. Such as in this case, where all of my Enfaust skills were struggling. Now, I could use ego, but let's assume I do not have any for whatever reason. In this situation, evade is your friend, and I would recommend having at least two IDs that have evade. Why exactly, though? Well, the main reason my clashes are struggling is this staggering offense level difference. Offense level increases the clash power of skills by 1 for every 3 offense level difference. This does not apply when attacking into an evade though, since you are not clashing. This means you only have to evade against the base roll of the enemy, which is often very doable. This means that strong evades have a massive value in this mirror dungeon due to the potential offense level debuffs that you can be forced into taking. Some of these increase offense level by so much, but can actually be taken if you build your team around evading. Or not even build your team around it, just having a few evaders can make a big difference. For new or progressing players, Sank Otis on the current banner is a genuinely fantastic ID for this circumstance, and Sank Clair, if you end up getting him, is frankly a little insane, so that banner is a strong recommend by your friendly neighborhood Esku. Regardless, while evade does not advance the fight much, it allows you to live, and conserve your HP, which is a pretty valuable resource when you do not have ample egos to use. 
Evade is a pretty reliable get out of jail free card, and on screen are some other notable high rolling Evade IDs. Either way, by floor 4 and 5 it is likely you have a good stockpile of Ego resources, and if you don't, well you should have saved more the previous floors, but using Ego is essentially an inevitability. And thankfully, I don't think any Ego is required. Or no particular Ego is required. And no Blind Obsession, nor Fluid Sack, or even Sun Shower are needed, though they certainly do help out. The best thing to have is really any healing Ego as a backup, and or a strong AoE option, preferably of 5 weight, which there are plenty of those that exist, for early staggers so you don't need to worry about human fights nearly as much. The most important thing is to not accept defeat. As in, in case you lose an ally or something goes wrong, you can always run with your tail between your legs and try again. I can say with pretty solid confidence that no position is unwinnable, and if it is, it's probably your fault, or Ishmael's. If you made it through the gauntlet of floor 5 and have made it to the boss, I don't really have any more advice for you. These are bosses you should really have fought before at some point, and if you haven't for some reason, reading is your friend. The only small bit of advice slash a reminder I can give you is that you can relatively safely give an ID an extra slot. If they have a particularly good skill replacement or just your strongest ID for one reason or another, it's not a bad idea. Most bosses will not require all 6 skills to be used to turn 1, so this can be a powerful tool to use in certain scenarios, though I have not had to use it myself. Again, I wish I could give more specific advice, but really, the bosses are hardly the worst part, depending on your debuffs. It is mostly all about the human fights, so if you've made it to the boss with 6 competent IDs alive, you should be fine. At the end of the day, Mirror Dungeon Hard is hard. And it is content meant to be cleared by players with sufficient game knowledge and, to an extent, sufficient IDs. If you simply do not know enough about the game, then I can recommend my tutorial video, and if you have already cleared your Mirror Dungeon for the week and are just watching this video because it is Esku content and you eat it up like it's your death row final meal, thanks for that too. On a serious note, I love this Mirror Dungeon and a lot of its concepts, but its main shortcoming is, in my opinion, having the same exact rewards as the previous Mirror Dungeon hard version. I doubt we will see this rectified, but it leads to this potentially harder version of the Mirror Dungeon feeling a little lackluster on rewards when clearing Mirror Dungeon too hard was generally less effort. Regardless, it is a fun mode, both the normal and hard versions, and I'm glad we have content that finally, finally properly encourages team building, even if it is in the way of giving us overpowered goodies like we are spoiled rich children. That's all from me. As always, thank you for watching, and I apologize if the editing and the voiceover is a little all over the place. I wrote this in the span of six hours, and I'm just now finishing up at 3.53am. So hey, uh, if you made it to this point, subscribe, because I want to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and the only way I do that is if I ask for subscribers like I'm a little plebeian baby boy. But with that, this video... Hands now.